clubs. I work with I work with football clubs. I've, I've worked with uh, rugby clubs for a number of years. I was uh, the England rugby nutritionist for 15 years, but I've spent uh, I spent five years at Millwall. I'm in my sixth or seventh season top at Spurs, Tottenham, uh, and I've just finished up five seasons with Man City. Wow. When you you know when you first come come to a football club, you have a look around and you see what the general state of the the restaurant or the canteen's like. You sort of speak to the players about their particular diets to find out what the quality of the diet's like. And then you start working on, okay, how can we make, make this better so that so the players feel better and then hopefully then they perform better. And part of that journey is really, I say, if you wanted to put it in a nutshell, it's about the quality of the, the food they put in their bodies. So it's getting single ingredient foods and as, mu as much as possible cooking from scratch. So basically building your own meals from, from scratch with with quality ingredients. Obviously, football is like a it's a it's a dynamic, you know, intermittent like quite a powerful sport, a lot of sprinting, jumping and all that sort of thing and then you have to maintain that energy for quite a long period of time. And so in order to do that, you need quite a lot of energy from carbohydrates. So quality um, carbohydrate intake is is really critical and by that I mean eating a lot of vegetables a lot of whole grains and foods which release their energy nice and slowly into the system. So, so the type of thing you do is try and get people away from things you know that they may be snack on and, and we know are not good for us like crisps, confectionery and all and fizzy drinks and things like that and then moving them more to things like oats, fruits, bananas, apples, brown rice, brown bread and broccoli and all those other things that are really, really good. Well, obviously, when you're young, you're still growing, so you do need, you do need an abundance of energy uh, just because you're fueling growth and you're also maybe fueling activity like football and sports and all that other sort of thing. So the calories have to be, have to be right, and I, I've got all those calories mapped out in one of the guides that uh, I'll send through to you. So that's all there for you. But I, I think with, with kids especially, it's really important to get them eating lots of fish, lots of chicken, some red, some red meats, some good low-fat dairy, so yogurts, milks, th things like that. Um, and really trying to encourage them to eat plenty of veg. I mean, a lot of children are resistant to vegetables, so it's kind of a health by stealth thing. How can you sneak that veg into their diet? So I, I like to use things like soups, casseroles, stews, like bolognese, where you, where you put all the veg in and then you whiz it up so they can't see all the, the bits, as it were, and you sneak it in like that. Um, and, I, and I think it's healthy also not to be super strict with, with kids. You know, as long as they're getting 80% of the day right they can have the odd tree and things like that and then they're just going to feel one is they hanker after that stuff all the time so I don't, I don't know how many times my son's asked me for ice cream before his dinner <laughs> it must be over a thousand <laughs> yeah but it, but to be honest a little bit of that kind of thing is absolutely fine as long as they've had the good stuff first because they just convert it into energy and they're, they're running around all the time is It's a, it's a big area and I think, I think a, a take home phrase would be food first, like particularly for children because there are a lot of supplements available to athletes, you know, adults and stuff. Um, sometimes the temptation can be for teenagers to maybe go for the supplement over the food and I think that's probably wrong. Um, so in terms of recovery, some of the best things to have would be like uh, the flavoured milks, or making a homemade smoothie with yogurt, fruits, banana, peanut butter, that, that kind of thing. So you make, you, you make like a homemade shake. And then um, once, once you're sort of into the realms of 16, 17, 18, then you can start thinking about do they need a protein supplement. Um, a, lot of, a lot of parents like to give their kids maybe a multivitamin or something, just to, like an insurance policy guarding against uh, common deficiencies. And I think it, of, of any age group, um, when you're growing, 
and training and having to work hard at school, then your requirements for nutrients are going to be higher than, than if you're not doing those types of things. So there would be an argument to say, you know, take a good broad spectrum, multivitamin and mineral f appropriate for that age group. And then, and then for recovery, you, you're really emphasising two things. You, you, you get the fluids back in the system as quickly as possible, so you prevent dehydration. And then you get sugars and proteins back into the system as quickly as possible to rebuild the muscles and replenish the, the lost energy. And most of the time, the best way to do that is in the form of some kind of drink. So like a milky drink or a smoothie-based drink. So, so like some of those cereals are, are quite good because they're whole grains and they're going to they're gonna be like loads better than like a crunchy nut cornflakes or cocoa pops or one of the real, or Crave, one of the real sugary ones where they inject a lot of sugar back into it. And of course you can also go down the sort of the porridge or the muesli route as well and maybe use a little bit of granola to sweeten things a little bit rather than a whole bowl full of granola. And it's not to say that those aren't good, good starts of the day, but I think mixing it up with the odd day where you have pancakes made with you know lo lovely fresh eggs, maybe even an, an omelette, and just getting them to think outside the box a little bit, we're, we're kind of blinkered down into cereals, toast, cereals, toast. That's the, and, and you know or or or, or latte and uh, pastry, that kind of a breakfast. It's, and and actually, s some of the time that's fine, but if it's all the time, then you're missing out on other, other nutrients which are going to be really good to get you off to the start of, start of the day. And protein, the, the real thing that's lacking in those meals is a quality protein. It's, it's a really good question. I, I think, like I was saying before, I think eating as close to nature intended to, to, to as possible. So that, that's minimum processed food. So, you know, fast foods, um, like fast food restaurants would be generally keeping them away from those types of things unless it's sort of like an emergency or a treat. Cooking with single ingredients from scratch, um, moving away from sugary breakfast cereals and, and that kind of thing, because that's a like, go-to, like lazy breakfast, and moving more to things like eggs, you know, beans, toast, that, those kinds of a, a breakfast, so more of a hearty start to the day with a, with a good protein uh, in at breakfast. So pancakes are a favourite in, in, in this house. Um, and, then, and then it's it, depending on, what, what they're, on their activity. So if they're doing something quite active, yes, three times a week, then you'd make sure that when they go off, I'm sending them off with a nice like uh, hydration type drink. So some water, maybe with a little bit of squash, squash in it. And when, and when they finish that off, that'll tend to be the times where if they want some ice cream and some berries or something like that for pudding, then I'll, I'll put it in there. So I'm sort of trying to get them to think about if they do more, they need a bit more. And if they do less, they need a bit less. I think that's quite a good concept to take into, into adult, adult life. But yeah, so eat how nature intended single ingredient foods, cooking from scratch as much as possible, trying to get them to help in the kitchen. So, you know, learn by watching, learn by doing. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that quite soon I'll be waking up and there'll be a cooked breakfast and a cup of coffee ready for me <laughs> and no one will have killed themselves in the kitchen. I'm still waiting. <laughs> but, yeah, it's working on that one. That's good. That's yeah. great. Taking, say, if you're making a bolognese, the, there's two choices. You can you can get your meats and then you buy one of those like stirring sauces, and the job's done. And may, you might chop a bit of veg to go in it, but by and large you're relying on the sauce to do all the work for you. Or you could you can start with garlic, onions, carrots, celery, cooking that all in olive oil. Then you add your tomatoes, your herbs, your stock, and then you maybe cook you cook your meat separately. So it's going to take longer, but by building that meal up like that, what you've done is you've included far more vegetables. And if you look on the pack at the back of most stirring sauces, the third ingredient is sugar. So by cooking with single ingredients from scratch, you're automatically bringing down your total sugar intake from those ready-made sauces. And let's not forget that some of those companies now have to write on the side, do not eat more than once a week. It's only recently been made law 
and, 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 he's, and he's, I was speaking to someone the other day and they said, I've been eating that every day. And now they tell me it's once a week, you know, so, and it's because they're so high in like sugar, fats and salt and things like that, which is not good to consume in large amounts every day. Although of course you can have it sometimes and it's fine. Well, the, some really good ones are like hard fruit. So like an apple or pear, something like that. Um, nuts are really good. So almonds, brazils, all those kind of mixed nuts, but not, not dry roasted, salted nuts, but you know, raw, raw unsalted, unroasted nuts. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of flapjacks, like homemade ones. Because they've got, the, you know, they have got sugar in, but they've got so many oats. And if you make them yourself, you can chuck in a load of pumpkin seeds and other things like that, which are really good for kids. Because they're loaded with, um, essential fats and minerals and things like that and yeah that that's my go-to snacks really it's, it's kind of like something i can just grab out of the fridge stick in my pockets and then head down to collect them it's definitely people are maybe more time pressured than than they perhaps were uh, i was going to say in the olden days then but sadly, it's not that long ago <laughs> uh, so there's that and then i think uh, there's a there's a number of other things I mean, there's gaming, you know, I, I, was, I was around when the first Atari came out, which was <laughs> amazing, but, but obviously there's a massive rise in gaming, so kids would just sit down, you know, there was, there, was three, there was three TV channels and then there was four, suddenly four, now there's, you can watch cartoons 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you want now. So there's things like that, people are more scared of playing out, so you, you know, we'd play, in this sort of time of the year you'd be playing out till it got dark. I'll be over in Bicky Park till it got dark. So there's, there's all little things like that, which probably, and then there's definitely a rise in um, fast foods, convenience foods, so restaurants, fried chicken places, pizzerias. If you look after school, the amount of kids that sort of gravitate towards, because it's cheap, very cheap food, that, that um, it, has, it has the addictive combination of sugar, salt, and fat. And if, if you eat that too much, your brain just loves it and it can't get enough of it. So you keep going back for more. Yeah, so if we take Millwall as an example, um, what would happen is every player would be seen individually for like a one-on-one -on -one consultation. We'd, we'd map out, we'd do a food diary, so they'd have to weigh and measure everything they ate for a week. Then we'd send that away for analysis. We'd, we'd take blood from them, we'd take hair from them, and then we'd look and look in the blood and the hair to see what was going on in terms of is does their diet support them with the right kind of nutrition that they need so we'd be looking at iron b vitamins magnesium zinc and, and more information on all those things is in the those guides that you can download and then and then we'd say right okay you you don't eat enough fish you need to increase your zinc rich foods and take a bit of magnesium at night because it's going to help you sleep things like that so mag not having enough magnesium can cause like a uh, twitchy eye. Some people get that when they get tired, but also like muscle cramps and that, and that kind of restless leg feeling that you can't get to sleep when you've got restless legs. It's a really important mineral and we don't consume enough of it because we don't eat enough vegetables and nuts and seeds. So it's, it's commonly deficient. The almonds and Brazil nuts would be really good sources and pumpkin seeds is really good sources. but most most um most vegetables will have b vitamins in it. it's just you don't you don't it's important not to overcook them because you destroy some of the b vitamins uh spinach is a very good source of b vitamins yes yeah, so there's um there's a few websites there's one called sports nutrition vlog v l o g so that's a good one for general information i've got the aminoman.com which is, is various potions and powders that I make myself for elite athletes to make them perform better. Uh, and then it, um, Twitter is just at Matt Lovell. So just generally, you know, low, low level information, but stuff I think is interesting that I'll be putting that out on my Twitter feed as well.